The white man accused of killing nine black parishioners inside a Charleston church will reportedly be allowed to represent himself. In making the decision today, a federal judge deemed it unwise for Roof to defend himself, but granted the request nonetheless. Justice reporter Paula Reed is in Washington with the details for us. Paula, what are the consequences in this case for allowing Roof to represent himself? It doesn't seem like the judge wanted it to happen. Jamie, it's life or death. Even the most experienced defense attorney would have had a very difficult time keeping Dylan Roof from conviction and ultimately death row. So now any chance he had to possibly get a life sentence is gone. Other consequences are for the victim's families. This will now have more of a circus-like atmosphere because Dylan Roof hasn't gone to law school. He doesn't know the procedure. He doesn't know the rules, which will likely draw this out and make it all the more difficult for the victim's families. You know, I, I'm going to plead a little ignorance here. I didn't know someone who's on uh, could face the death penalty would even be allowed to represent themselves. Is this common? No, most people don't know that. Most people were shocked to, to hear today that he was able to do this. It's not common. Most people, when they face these kind of serious charges, they do elect to either hire an attorney or have one appointed. It is more common to represent yourself in civil cases where it's money is what's on the line. But yes, you can represent yourself. You have a constitutional right to do that. Unless a judge finds you not competent or believes that you will be extremely disruptive to the proceedings, you are allowed to represent yourself even in a death penalty case. It seems like we're almost setting ourselves up for a little bit of a circus here. Yes, no doubt. It will be very interesting to see how Dylan Roof proceeds. A similar case, the trial of the Fort Hood shooter, Major Nadal Hassan. I covered that down in Texas. He, there was a death penalty case he chose to represent himself. But what he did is he didn't use it as a soapbox. He just presented no evidence on his own behalf, didn't ask any of the witnesses questions, allowed the prosecution to make their case when it was done. He was done. He was convicted. He was sentenced to death. It is unclear at this point if Dylan Roof will take a similar approach or if he may try to use this as a soapbox, particularly with the rise of some of these extremist groups, sort of far right wing groups that he has said that he supports. Wow. Uh, Paula, what's next in the proceedings? Jury selection is what gets underway today. That's actually a very complicated process to try to weed out uh, from all the thousands of people in the state, try to find people who will not be biased in this case, who have an open mind to the facts. And also, because this is a death penalty case, you have to find people who are open to issuing a capital sentence. It's a very complicated procedure that is usually done by a team of attorneys. Here, Dylan Roof will be at the reins. Paula Reed, thank you so much uh, for your expertise. Appreciate it. It's going to be fascinating to watch.